So we're going to have a bit of a look at the idea of a hydrated compound and the way that we can use this sort of analysis by mass to figure out the, f the chemical formulae of a hydrated compound. So a hydrated compound is basically just a compound that has had water tacked on. So if we have, for example, a sample of sodium chloride here, where all these little green dots are either so are sodium ions and chloride ions in a one-to-one -one ratio, as given by the empirical formula for sodium chloride, NaCl. So here, these are sodium ions and chloride ions, you know, in their correct ratio. And basically, a hydrated compound is one where we have, you know, this this ionic compound here in the correct ratio and everything. And basically, all that's happened is that water molecules. We might as well use blue since we're talking about water. Is when water molecules have been tacked on. So that we've got a we've we've been we've got this sodium chloride compound and we've just added some water molecules throughout the structure of the sodium chloride. Now the way that we represent this, yes, it is we could represent this using an empirical formula, and in that case we would have to sort of demonstrate, you know, we would have to include the hydrogens and the oxygens in the water molecules in the empirical formula here, which wouldn't be a problem here for sodium chloride as there are no hydrogens or oxygens here. But if we if if the green stuff here was a compound such as phosphate or was a, was a compound such as phosphoric acid and we wanted to include the water in the empirical formula, then this is going to create some issues because we've got hydrogen and oxygen here and hydrogen and oxygen here. So yes, we could add the hydrogen and oxygen and sort of come up with a confusing empirical well not confusing but a a sort of a difficult to, to interpret empirical formula here. But what we do when we have a hydrated compound, so when we have a compound that we've added H2O molecules, is what we do, if we, for example, if we're adding to sodium chloride, we put a dot here, and we have X is a number, X is a coefficient, we have dot X H2O. Okay, and basically the value of X tells us the number of water molecules that are in the compound for every chloride ion and every sodium ion. So if there are twice as many water molecules as there are chloride ions, then X is going to equal 2. Okay, so for example, if we, if we had phosphoric acid and we had it hydrated like so, say we had a 2 here, say X is equal to 2, then what's going to happen is that uh, if, we were to, if we were to create an empirical formula, then instead of having this dot 2H2O, we're going to have something like H7PO6. Okay, now that, we look at that, that's a bit confusing, we don't really know what that means. But if we write it in this form, with the phosphoric acid here, then the dot, and then the number of H2Os in the correct ratio, so here we've got two water molecules for every phosphoric acid molecule, then we can more clearly see what's going on. We look at this, we can't tell, you know, what this is. We see here, okay, we've got phosphoric acid and it's hydrated, with a coefficient of an X value of 2. And so that's what we mean when we talk about a hydrated compound, and that's how we represent it. Now... So let's say, for example, that I am given this compound here. Someone hands me this, you know, a pile of pile of this stuff here, and tells me that I've got magnesium sulfate, and it's hydrated. So this is an example of how we sort of work this stuff out. How we move, how we go through figuring out what the x value is, given that we're told something's hydrated. So someone's given me. Someone's given me this sample here, and they've said to me, you know, I've got this compound, I know it's magnesium sulfate, and I know it's hydrated. Now, I, now I want to work out how hydrated, it is, how hydrated it is. Basically, I want to find out the value of X that's going to be in this, in this empirical formula with the hydrated, with the hydration tacked on to the end. So I want to figure out the value of X or the number of water molecules for every magnesium and sulfate ion in this sample. So I need a way to do that. Now what we do, we, we touched on this idea earlier. What we do here is because we're dealing with water again, what we can do is we can heat to constant mass. So we go through this heating process where we weigh it, we weigh our sample, we heat it to 110 degrees Celsius, we let it cool 
and then we see how much water has evaporated by weighing it again. And we repeat this cycle until the mass, until the weight, until our weight measurement is the same on two, consecu two consecutive try, two consecutive cycles. Because at this point, it means no more water has evaporated in the cycle, and it means that all the water's gone, and we just have magnesium sulfate left over. So if we heat this this sample here, this magnesium sulfate, this hydrated magnesium sulfate, if we heat this to constant mass, then we're going to be left with just magnesium sulfate. So Let's say that. Let's say that you know I'm given this sample and I'm told that I'm, I'm to, I weigh it and it's 2.31 grams of magnesium sulfate, which is hydrated. We don't know how hydrated it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat to constant mass. So say I heat it once comes out as 1.53 grams, I heat it again, comes out as 1.45 grams, I heat it again, and it comes out as 1.44 grams, and again the next time. So, the same thing twice in a row. So I'll write it out properly, 1.44 grams. Okay, so that's our constant mass. So here we've got 2.31s of magnesium sulfate hydrated, and here we've heated to constant mass, which means we've gotten rid of the, uh, the water molecules, and we're just left with 1.44 grams of magnesium sulfate. So that's the process of heating to constant mass, and that's what we can deduce. We started out with 2.31 grams of this here. We ended up with 1.44 grams of pure magnesium sulfate without any, any sort of hydration stuff going on. So what we're going to do now is we want to work out the value of x in this formula here. Now what we have to do is just like just like other other questions about other situations where we want to find the chemical formula by finding you know molar ratios. Here what we're doing is we're finding a molar ratio not between elements but between the magnesium and the sulfate ions and the water molecules. We want to find the molar ratio between the H2O and the MgSO4. So the way we do that, again, is by breaking first. We've got masses here, so we go from the mass ratio to the molar ratio. So we've got 1.44 grams of magnesium sulfate. Now we want to find out the, the, uh, the mole of magnesium sulfate. Now that's going to be equal to the mass of magnesium sulfate, which is 1.44 over the molar mass of magnesium sulfate which is equal to 24.3 plus 32.1 plus 4 oxygens, which each have molar masses of 16. So this comes out as 1.44 over 120.4. So what we get here is the number of mole of magnesium sulfate in this sample up here is 0 0.0120 mole. So that's all well and good. Now we've worked out the mole of magnesium sulfate in this 2.31 gram sample. So now we want to work out the mole of H2O. So basically the mass of water is going to be the, the change here. All the water is evaporated in this heating process. So the mass of water is going to be equal to 2.31 minus 1.44. And that is going to equal 2.31 minus 1.44 is going to equal 0 0.87. Now, if you want to work out now the number of mole of H2O, because we're trying to figure out the ratio between the mole of H2O and the mole of magnesium sulfate. So next, we want to work out the mole of water. That's going to equal 0 0.87. Remember, the molar mass of water, we've got two hydrogens and an oxygen, so it's going to be 1 plus 1 plus 16 equals 18. 
that gives us 0 0.048 moles of water. So, if we want to put this precise, then we've got 3 here. It keeps going with more and more 3s. So we've got 0 0.0483 mole of water, we've got 0 0.0120 mole magnesium sulfate. Now we want to get this into a whole number ratio so we can figure out the value of x. And the best way to do that is to divide this number, divide to figure out which one of these is the smallest. So which one of these, these values for the mole of magnesium sulfate and the mole of water, which of those is the smallest, and divide the other number by that. Divide the largest number of mole by the smallest number of mole. So here we've got 0 0.0483. over 0 0.0120. And while it may not be exact, it, it is very close to being equal to, so it's approximately equal to, but you know, very close, close enough for our purposes here, equal to 4. So that tells us that the ratio of, that tells us that if we go up here, the ratio of, the ratio of water to magnesium sulfate is going to be 4 to 1. So we've got 4 water molecules for every uh, for every magnesium and sulfate ion. So that means that our formula here, that means our x value is equal to 4, and our chemical formula is MgSO4 with 4 water molecules. So that's how we that's how we sort of analyze hydrated compounds and find their formula, uh, and that's sort of how we write out the formula. We have this dot dot x H two O, which allows us to sort of really distinguish what the compound is and the fact that it's hydrated, as opposed to just including the H two Os in the empirical formula and sort of adding lots of confusion to what's going on here. But by, by dotting by writing this as a compound dotted with some water molecules. Keeps it clear what the compound is that we're dealing with, and it keeps it clear that it is a hydrated compound. And also, in this form, we can see how hydrated it is based on the value of x. So if we want to find the value of x, we heat the compound to constant mass, just like we did when we were trying to calculate water content. And so we heat to constant mass, we figure out, that allows us to figure out the amount of water that was in the compound and the amount of uh, of of, of the other compound that's in there, not the water, for in, in this case the sodium chloride, or in the case of the calculation, the magnesium sulfate. So heating the constant mass allows us to figure out the mass of water that's in the compound and the mass of the magnesium sulfate. From there we can work out the mole of magnesium sulfate and the mole of water, and then we can figure out that we can use the ratio between those two those two figures for mole to figure out the chemical formula for the hydrated magnesium sulfate.